thank you. Um, pleasure to be here today. I'm going to talk quickly about uh, Asincourt Energy here. So yeah, we'll briefly talk to you about Asincourt Energy here. Asincourt Energy, we're, uh, we're involved in the alternative energy space. Our primary commodities we're searching for right now are uranium and, uh, and lithium. We're going to be talking, I'll go briefly a little bit about the company and then uh, into a bit of a more technical details on our projects. Uh, the first thing I want to get out of the way here is our uh, uh, forward-looking statements and disclaimer. Um, this is a pretty standard format. The, uh, all technical information in the presentation has been reviewed by me. I am the qualified person uh, for Asincourt Energy. So we explore, uh, we pursue exploration and development projects uh, that uh, we feel could anchor the company globally as a, as a critical alternative energy uh, uh, provider. And we are, as I said, we are searching for uh, dominantly uranium and lithium. Uh, anything else that uh, comes our way in those fields, though, we could also take interest in as well. Um, uh, alternative energies and clean clean energy are uh, are uh, pretty important in the world right now for uh, helping to battle uh, climate change and uh, find better ways to use use energy more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Our management team uh, dominantly are uh, consists of Alex Kleinman. He's our uh, president, CEO, and director. Uh, he's been involved in the junior exploration space for for many years and uh, is uh, quite involved in a few different companies uh, including Asincourt to uh, to um, you know help us advance our projects. I came on with the company a couple of years ago um, to help us with our exploration programs. Um, I bring in a background of uh, uh, Good success in both uranium and base metal exploration over a 25 year career. Uh, and I've worked with several companies and made, made significant discoveries in those companies. So I came on with the company a few years ago. Uh, our board of directors also consists of Ted O'Connor and Paul Reynolds who have, uh, are both geologists have been involved in uh, lithium, rare earth metals, uranium for, for many years as well. And our chief financial officer is Vivian Chang. Uh, so we have a good management team, well-rounded, and we feel we've got a good technical base to advance our projects as well. Our, our main projects at this time are our East Preston Uranium Project located in Saskatchewan's Athabasca Basin in Canada. It's, uh, we control an 80% interest in this 25,000 hectare project. Uh, and it is located in one of the premier uranium districts in the world. We have also recently optioned the Big Hill Lithium Project in Newfoundland, in, in uh, eastern Canada. And uh, we're going to be working with another company, Atlantis Battery Metals, to advance that project uh, starting in the not too distant future. So our... East Preston project is located in the Athabasca Basin, uh, which I mentioned in northern Saskatchewan. It's a world-class uranium district. Uh, all of the uh, currently producing uranium mines in Canada are located in this, in this district as well. Uh, Saskatchewan has a stable political climate, easy, uh, easy area to work and uh, get access to ground for mining and exploration purposes. In our immediate neighborhood of the East Preston project on the west side of the basin, uh, we're, we're in some pretty big, pretty good company. Many, uh, many recent discoveries, including NextGen uh, with their Aero discovery, uh, Fission Uranium with their Patterson Lake South discoveries, uh, Pure Point Uranium has their Spitfire discoveries in that area as well. So we're well placed, similar. Uh, Similar geology, right neighborhood, got everything going for us. And, uh, you know, we're in there with some pretty big players. So, so it's, a, it's a good area to be. So I'll briefly talk about our, our uh, Air, uh, East Preston project here. Uh, we initially got involved in the project uh, back in 
2017, the uh, first thing we did was run airborne surveys over the project to highlight conductive corridors. Now we want to highlight conductive corridors because uh, they're the main driver for finding uranium uh, uranium mineralization. You want to be where you've got conduct uh, conductive packages in the basement uh, to, to sort of, that seems to be where the unconformity uranium deposits typically seem to be focused. So we located two main conductive corridors through the center portion of the project shown here as, uh, and there are AG trend and which is a, st a straight line conductor through the middle of the project. And to the east of that, there's sort of an, an S-shaped trend, which is our KHQ trend. Those are our main two trends we're looking at right now. But as you can also see, there are many shorter parallel trends to the west and some bullseye targets to the east as well. So there's no shortage of, uh, of targets on the property to, for us to explore. Once we had located these conductors, we went in on the ground ran gravity and ground based EM surveys to identify exactly where the conductive packages were. And because uh, it's not, you not only want to know where the package is, you need to know within that package where the conductor actually is. So the, this slide, the colored background is gravity survey with the blue colors showing where there's low gravity. This typically identifies broken up ground, fault zones, structures. So we like to see those where the conductors are, which are identified by the squiggly lines through the, the grid shown on the map. So you've got conductors, you've got uh, structures together. That's what we want to see to know where we're in the right, in the right neighborhood. Previously, prior to the last two years, we had drilled up to 24 holes on the project, dominantly focused on the A, A, B zone and the north end of the G zone. This showed us we had geology uh, very similar to what we see in the Patterson Lake area with both Arrow and, uh, and Patterson Lake South. So we have the right geology. This work also showed us that we had trace element geochemistry showing us we had elevated pathfinders metals, which is our nickel, cobalt, copper, uh, zinc. We also have some rare earths showing up. So there's, there's something else we can keep an eye out for if we see greater concentrations of rare earths as well. In 2021-2022 winter, we came in with a, our largest program to that date on the project, focusing on the G, K, and H zones. We drilled 5,000 meters that pr program, and we identified uh, good anomalous uranium and um, alteration in three zones, in both all three zones, J, H, and K, uh, extending up to 1,700 meters combined between the three zones. Now, we talk about alteration. We want to focus in on, um, we, there's two models we're looking for. This slide shows the alteration models we are looking for. Uh, we've got where fluid comes out of the basement rocks and where the fluid goes down into the basement rocks. We only have everything below the unconformity on this slide uh, in our project area, but we're trying to focus in on the red areas. That's what we'd like to see. That's where the mineralization typically occurs. So we see clay alteration, elevated uranium, that brings us in closer to that zone. It gets us into the, to the blue and yellow zones. And, and then we try to get into the green, to the red zones on the, on the slides. Now the K zone, uh, we come back in 2020 to uh, 2023 program. In the 2022 program, we uh, identified extensive hydrothermal alteration on in the G, K, and H zones, elevated uranium and thorium up to uh, five times background values. Um, I talk about thorium a little bit because we see thorium um, typically, thorium uh, uranium ratios, you see five times the thorium that you see uranium. We're seeing values uh, closer to one to one and even higher, um, higher uranium values, showing us that we've got more uranium than thorium in the system, shows us we're seeing the elevated uranium we want to see. And the elevated uranium and the clay alteration is clear on indications that we're we're in the right zones. We're where we want to be. In 2020, 
2023 winter program, we came in, we drilled 3,600 meters and 13 drill holes. We drilled a few holes on the G zone. We drilled some a uh, couple of holes where the B zone transition transitions into K. Most of the drilling was done between the K and H zone, and we did do one hole on the Q zone as well. What this has shown us, we're seeing good. Um, we're starting to see more clay alteration in the K zone and extending into the H zone. We've extended that zone of alteration uh, by 300 meters to the south, to the north, and we've extended it a bit to the south as well. We're showing us the K zone is one of our primary target areas right now. We are still awaiting for geochemistry to come back on these zones, but uh, we're, we're excited that things are gonna look good and show us we're getting closer to our mineralization in that area. We're expecting those results uh, late May, or early June. Now, now recently we have also acquired our um, option into the Big Hill Lithium Project. Now we got interested in this area. It's a very grassroots program. It is just south of a of a recent lithium discovery, um, it, by uh, the Kraken discovery. It's called with another company in the area. We've now got ground south of them. Uh, we're typically looking for pegmatites in that area with a with a strong lithium component to them. Um, we feel confident that this property will have good lithium, uh, good pegmatites and lithium values based on what is being seen in the area um, on other geological trends in the area. So we're, we're very confident that we'll have lots of uh, pegmatite and granitoid dikes coming through the area that are going to show us what we want to see. Uh, our first program, we're hoping to get in there and do some reconnaissance work in um, late May and into June. Um, to give us a good start on knowing where we want to go next with this program. Very optimistic that it's going to show us what we want to see. Recent, in, recent ex, uh, reconnaissance that was done by the, the optioning company has shown uh, three main target areas and that uh, show, should show promising results once we get in there on the ground and actually start digging around and doing uh, uh, soil and uh, rock samples. So moving on a little bit to, to uh, the capital structure of the company, um, we currently have 227 million shares outstanding, a sig significant number of options and warrants also outstanding. And we have uh, approximately $5 million in the bank right now. Uh, we're unique in that we have a significant amount of institutional shareholders, which is is rare for a junior mining company, a junior exploration company that hasn't actually made a discovery yet. We've got up to we've got up to thirty percent institutional investors involved with in investing in the company, which is a good sign that the the industry has confidence in our ability to to deliver something in the not too distant future. Uh, we also have insiders and family and friends accounting for another another twenty percent ownership in the company. So it's a good good investor base, strong uh, strong bank at the moment, and uh, and and uh, not a, not a, not a huge number of uh, of shares outstanding. It's fairly high, but uh, for a junior exploration company that's been making it through the the recent uh, uh, downturns in the market, we're in really good shape. And thank you, and uh, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you, Trevor. So let's dive into the Q&A session. So the first question is by Chiron. So what's your exit strategy and are you looking to be acquired in the future? Um, I mean, that is that would always be an option should we find something and should somebody make an offer that shareholders can't refuse. But I mean, it's not something that is in our sights right now. I mean, we, we're, we'd like to take our projects to the next level and actually find something uh, before that becomes uh, something we have to consider or think about. I see. And the second question is from Rehan Brian, which is, what's your team's track record in exploration and development? So in terms of exploration, uh, we've got a, a good management team that has been involved in, in several companies. I myself have been involved in several significant uranium discoveries um, with predecessor companies. I had previously worked with uh, Chemical Corporation, 
where I made discoveries both in the Athabasca Basin and in the Northern Territory of Australia. And then after that, I worked with another junior company, um, UEX Corporation, where I also was involved in their uh, Aurora discovery on their Christie Lake project. So um, myself, I feel I have a good track record. Um, our boards of directors have also been involved with teams that have made discoveries and on projects where discoveries have been made. So, so we feel fairly confident that we've got the technical team and the technical background we need to, to uh, oversee the advancement of our projects in the right direction. That's great to hear. So that's all the questions for you today, Trevor. Thank you for being here. And uh, and as in quartz projects, uh, the potential in the nuclear energy industry, um, I'm sure the investors should keep an eye on as in quartz with the growing demand for uranium. So thank you again for being here today. Thank you for having me today. Mm -hmm.